to the Italian Football Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to the Italian Football Podcast. I'm Carlo Gargnesi, joined as always by Nima Tavari. On today's show, we will react to a slightly shorter Serie A weekend calendar. Only six matches due to the, the Super Cup in, in Saudi Arabia. That The big story of the weekend, though, is unfortunately not a positive one as we once again have to have to talk about uh, another racism storm. Mike Magnon and Milan walking off the pitch after Magnon was, was racially abused by fans in the match in Udine. We'll discuss that as well as Milan's dramatic late comeback win. Elsewhere, Juventus go top in the absence of Inter being at that Super Cup as they beat Lecce thanks to Dusan Vlaovic double. It was a, a great debut on the bench at Roma for Daniele De Rossi uh, and also for Davide Nicola at Empoli. Uh, Roma's former coach, Jose Mourinho, is incredibly in talks with Napoli. Um, what the hell is uh, Aurelio De Laurentiis thinking or smoking there? And the relegation race is is even tighter now after the, the weekend's results, as Nima, I'm sure, will be very happy about. Um, we're going to do a, a profile of uh, Torino defender Alessandro Buongiorno, who's wanted by Milan and a, and a number of big European clubs. And we'll also have our usual Baggio, Prem Face and Serie Ass of the Week. For all our first-time listeners, this is our free weekly episode that we do every Monday, reviewing the weekend Serie Action and all the biggest talking points in Italian football. If you want to support the Italian Football Podcast and receive all of our content that we do throughout the week, including a weekly Q&A episode every Tuesday where we answer all of the questions sent in from our patrons, plus the weekly Thursday midweek review show, plus interviews, post-match reaction and much, much more, then go to patreon.com slash TIP and become a subscriber for just $2.99 a month plus VAT. And you can also sign up to be a paid subscriber on Spotify. We'll provide the link in the description. It's the same price and same terms. And for all of you who listen on Spotify, Apple and iTunes podcast, we'd really appreciate it if you give us a five-star rating, give us a follow or a like. Um, we're also on YouTube as well. Um, all of that really helps us to grow and do more quality content. Okay, let's get into today's show. Okay, so um, we have to start off with the, the negative, and that is the racism storm involving Mike Magnon. Magnon and Milan walk off the pitch uh, during the, the first half of their, of their game against Udinese in Udine at the Stadio Friuli. Um, 1-0 at the time to, to Milan. Magnon um, was subjected to, to repeated racist insults from, from some of the fans behind the goal. Um, he had already warned the referee on the first time it happened, uh, and the fourth official that is, and that he was receiving abuse from, from the stands behind him. Um, and then it happened again. And as per the, the protocols of Serie A, a, a statement was, was, was read out, uh, warning that, you know, if this continued, that the, the game would be suspended. Um, and the, 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 the monkey chance, it seems, continued uh, after the Milan went 1-0 ahead. And uh, Magnon again alerted the referee and the, the game was, was temporarily halted. Magnon walked off the pitch, followed by the, the Milan players. Um, and then a few minutes, three to five minutes later, they, the players returned to the pitch and they, um, they continued um, with, the, with the game. And it seems that the, the racism didn't, didn't, um, didn't persist once they'd, once they'd returned. But obviously, this is a, another uh, very uh, ugly spectacle um, for Serie A and here we are in 2024 Nima, and we're still having to talk about it yes we are and um, it's there's so many thoughts going through my head when I saw that and I've kind of written everything down to try to collect this there's, there's one aspect which is just anger, rage, fury at this happening time and time again but when when I've when I calm down I'm starting to think well why is it that this happens repeatedly in Italian football from Serie A all the way down to Serie C time and time and time again but it doesn't happen in the Premier League it doesn't happen in North American professional sports it doesn't even it doesn't happen in in very many other professional sports in any of the other countries in, 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 in that we can compare the Serie A to, uh, or even any other Western countries. 
And the reason for that is because it doesn't mean that Italy is more racist than any other country in the West. Absolutely not. That's a stupid thing. It's a stupid, hot, childish take. What it is, is that there's, there are no serious, proper consequences for these actions. And that's why they keep happening. And what I mean by that is the Serie A the Serie can't do, obviously, this has been a problem for 30 years. This is not about Italy's new government. The older governments, whether they identified as left-wing or right-wing, they were all the same. They need to enact legislation that helps the league to act tougher because obviously the league can't do more with the current legislation. It's as simple as that. And what do I mean by that? You live in the, you live in England, Carlo. What happens if someone starts doing that at a Premier League terrace? They get prosecuted, they get thrown out, and they get banned for life. The Serie A doesn't have those those uh, abilities to do that. Mm. And well, with the with the with a lot of the the stadiums not being owned by the by the clubs, it's actually out of the hands of many of the clubs. Even if the exactly. clubs wanted to do, a, do anything can't about do it, it public which, land. which a lot of the clubs don't want to do anything no. about it. But even if they did want to do anything about it, it's out of their hands. Yeah, because um, it's public land. They they can't. Yeah. They're, they're, Although they're, Udinese they're, do own their own stadium, so Udinese do. do have the do have the power to do something well, about they, it. So we well, should see thing. what happens. This is the thing, now. though. They, they they can't just. You, we can't put this on Udinese. We can't just. And I'm going to say the same thing here as I said when when it happened with you. And Lukaku. This is not a Juventus should not be policing this. This is something that the police should be doing. Like, but from a sporting point of view, they can ban, they can identify and ban the 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 the, the, the fans from. Well, from the Daspo, on- the Daspo, the bans should be handed out by the police, like it was uh, when with the 171 player people who monkey chanted Lukaku. You know, the police in Turin did that, and it has to go through the proper channels. But but, that's but, exactly but, 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 I mean. but the stadiums can identify if they own their own stadiums. Well, if know, they have, to, if if the stadiums, if are you modern, don't own your own stadiums, then the clubs can't can't. No, even, they can't do anything. Can't that's do anything why, that's why Inter and Milan can't do anything because they rent the stadium from the council. But and also because of the fact that that stadium is so old, that the technology isn't there to be able to identify them. Like th- this is exactly what I mean, and the, this is why it keeps happening in Italy over and over and over again because there are no repercussions. I mean, most of our listeners who are from England or from North America, listening to this, will will probably f- will, will laugh at the, the the ludicrousness of people monkey chanting black players at a football stadium because they know if they did it in their countries. It's it's just unthinkable. That just doesn't happen. Mm. It just doesn't happen because there's been long term. It, it's not just a knee jerk reaction. This is something that sports authorities in all of those countries have been working on for mm. decades. I should I should I should come back at you. And this isn't a you know I don't want to make this about what about isn't. But this this you know, this does happen a lot in Spain, in Eastern Europe, in in Russia, in in these kind of places. It isn't just exclusive to Italy. But when you're comparing it to say England to North America. Absolutely. Spot That's on. what I'm saying. Absolutely That's what I'm doing. On. That's what I'm doing. The Spain is is come on. Let's not even Spain go. Spain is we, even on another level. Let's so not even. I mean, I mean, sorry. The president of La Liga, Javier Tebas. I mean, his yeah. behavior. And that's one positive. Of yes, that's one positive of yesterday is that at least we saw. And we haven't even seen this. And th- I mean, this is a low threshold, so we shouldn't be applauding. I was going to say but this is a low the threshold. We shouldn't be applauding. But by Italy's, by, by previous instances, it was at least a step forward that we saw um, uh, Udinese put out a statement. We saw Gra- Gravina. Um, puts out uh, uh, immediately a statement. Udinese's came probably a little bit too late, came on Sunday, um, but we did see Balzaretti, the, t- the, the Udinese um, chief, uh, yeah. Federico Balzaretti, say straight off the game, condemning it. Less less good from from the from Gabriele Cioffi, the manager, who basically said that he doesn't he doesn't he what he doesn't uh, he would prefer to ignore it and talk about football. Um, that's the old way of, of uh, or, or the wrong way of going about it. Uh, but what Balzaretti did, you know, what Gravina did, at least that's at least they're sta- like they're acknowledging it. So I guess that that is there well, is some positives that, there. Not only but... that, not only that, the, the 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 protocol that all of the Serie A and the players' union and everyone have, have agreed to follow was followed immediately and without much fuss uh, in you know to to the to the letter. 
you know, Mike Mignon first told the referee, the referee understood it. He told the, 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 um, the speaker, they, they said it on the speakers, then it happened again. And then he took them like all of those things. They followed the protocol to, to the letter and without much fuss, but it also shows that the protocol is inept. It's not good enough. It's inadequate. And, I've seen so many stupidly hot takes about, oh, you should, you know, they should uh, empty, they should ban the home team and they should give them, you know, points deductions. No, 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 no. The players on the pitch aren't being racist. It's people in the stands who've paid a ticket to enter and watch football who are being racist. It should not fall back on, on athletes being punished for the behavior of idiots in the terrace. They've got nothing to do with that. I think it's not even collective punishment. It's stupid. It's the equivalent the, of yeah. you robbing a bank in England and the police arresting me in Sweden because we got a podcast together. It's stupid. <laughs> it's got no, there's no logic here. So it's, 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 it's just dumb. So it, I, I don't buy that nonsense at all. What I want to see, I, and the the Italian government has to act now, and it's not because they're right wing or look. Again, this has been going on for thirty. Well, to years. be fair, even Magnon said himself after, and I thought he put in a fantastic statement um, on uh, check out. Go to his uh, social media uh, yeah. and check out what he put out on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday lunchtime. It was mm. it was fantastic. Um, yeah. No, what, I think what, so as well. What, what he put out um, and I thought that, that he comes out of this as a real leader as well because he was he was everything that he said was was sincere like he didn't blame everybody he, he no. said that he said that Udinese players were fantastic he said that yeah the 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 the, the that um, the way the referee dealt with it was fantastic yeah. but he also said that you know it's unacceptable that you know um, that that uh, for example the Udinese uh Twitter account just said there's been an interruption in the yeah, game. Yeah, I know. You know I see, like, yeah. like he called out the things, the kind of like the little cultural things that, you know, th- that are wrong uh, that we talk about. And mm. also I think from a cultural point of view, um, there are, there is a feeling in Italy that you're racist, you, 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 you're racist to, to black players, um, not because you're racist, but because you believe that by doing so, you are affecting the opposition. Um, it's like a way of, of getting at the opposition to help your team win. Yeah. That is, that is a cultural... It's a form of football. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. a cultural way they look at it. And, 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 and you know, unfortunately, <laughs> Udinese turned the game around and, and they equalised pretty soon after they returned to the pitch. And, and, and then they took the lead and went 2-1. And then that kind of adds to that, to that feeling. And, and, you know, it's, it's, um, this, is the, this is the cultural side of things that also needs to be that needs to be worked at as well. Um, there, I know a lot of Italians that actually feel like, that think that way. They think that, you know, we're not being racist. This is just... Well, you don't need to look further than the statement put out by Curva Nord after Cagliari fans monkey chanted Romelu Lukaku and these guys were explaining yeah. racism to Lukaku in, in an open letter. That is one of the most bizarre statements. I, mean, I, don't, I don't have a lot of... I don't exactly have a high you know, expectation for any curva or any ultra, but that was even, that took the cake. Like that was just, I mean, it was, it was one of those moments where you're like, yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for your input. Um, now go get a job or apply for one. Um, it's, it was just unbelievably stupid. Um, but this is, this is that mentality and, 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 and they perpetuate it and, and, but it will disappear because again, you most people in Italy don't like this stuff. Italians don't live in a bubble, okay? They don't like this nonsense any more than, than you and I do or anyone else does. And they, the league has done what it can. It can't do more now with the 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 the, 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 the legislative tools uh, that that are available to it. This has to come from the government. They have to act quicker. They have to ena- make it. I, I don't know if they're going to make it criminal or not, because that's a separate debate. Debate. But what they need to do is to be able to quickly identify and pre- prosecute in terms of giving them bans to all all sporting events uh, for life. And I say for life because football going to football games is not a human right. It's a privilege, and if you can't go to a football game without hurling racist, racist abuse at the players on the pitch, then that's a privilege that's taken away from you. It's as simple as that. I, I just don't... It's, it's, it's not harder than that. 
That that's how it is. And and until people learn that you don't do that, you just don't do that. And again, it's not you know, it wasn't a lot of people at Udinese who did it, but it was enough. You know, one is one too many. Mm. You know, and and that's a good thing. And I think that we're moving towards that we're not having entire sections monkey chanting, which we've seen in the past, and hopefully we'll never see again. Maybe we're you know progress is slow, I guess, in this regard, even though it should never happen to begin with. But you know what I mean? Like maybe maybe the penny is dropping. I don't know. I hope so. I'd like to think it is. But it's yeah. it's it's um it's just it's exhausting. I think the way that Manion handled it, like you said, was I, I all I would say is if I can try and look at this in a positive uh, light, that I, at least we saw maybe a few steps forward in the response yeah. to it this time. Yeah. Yeah, we did. I think I think very that, slow, yeah, very small, but still, it's mm. moving. I mean, it shouldn't right happen direction. in the first place, of course. But the response to it, I think there were, there was a few steps forward in the way yeah. that it, it was handled. I think, and and, I, and that's why I think that it again. I think that the Serie A and the league showed with their response that this is they can't do more than this. This yeah. is something else, and and this is something that needs to come from the government. Um, and and they need to enact legislation to help the league police this and get these people and also we need new stadiums so that we can quickly identify who it is um and and be able to to uh, ascertain their identities and, and get rid of them well, well good luck with that um but <laughs> if, we, if we could talk about I'm not, i didn't i didn't say i was it was going to happen i just said it was it was something that should happen yeah well talking about the football itself it, it was uh it, it was an incredible game um the dramatic game and dramatic ending and incredible comeback from from Milan who who after that incident with Magnon um Udinese turned it around to go 2-1 up and looked like they were going to they were going to win the game and then two late goals from from Milan substitutes uh, Jovic first with the equalizer and then Okafor with the winner deep into into injury time um so this was about the Milan subs this was about the Milan subs and um yeah, Okafor and Jovic. I mean, Okafor has done well, I think, this season when he's played. Unfortunately, he's been injured so much. And as for Jovic, I mean, Jovic now, I was looking at this, he has six goals in his last eight games now for, for Milan. Uh, that's six goals in 360 minutes of football. That That is an average of a goal every 60 minutes in that, in that time. Since he scored his first goal for Milan against Frosinone at the start of December... He scored a goal every sixty minutes, and I mean, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to say that that Jovic is back, um, but but I mean, there's talk about him getting a, a permanent deal at, at, at Milan. I mean, he's. Uh, I mean, the subs won this for Milan, didn't they? They did, and I think what happened. Okay, Samajic scores a stunning goal, but how Milan. You know, and because Milan were obviously rattled and and destabilized mentally from this, and who can blame them? I mean, come on. Um, and that's why, again, I think the protocol as it is today is is is, is inadequate. But Milan, the way that they come back, I mean, let's remember Udinese take over, they score the they they take the lead, and then Milan kind of bounce back and and show that they are a team that is moving in the right direction in terms of growth and mental growth, and end up winning this deservedly. Um, for me, Jovic, like you said, the subs, Luk- Luka Jovic, I think, should stay at Milan. This is where he needs to be. He's at the exact, he's, he's at the right place, in the right club. He shouldn't go anywhere else, because he's exactly the kind of substitute that Milan need. Someone, when, they, when you're chasing a goal, mm. you need someone who's, who's parked there, who's a poacher, who doesn't dribble 15 players, but just scores. And that's what Ljovic does. It's it's no it's no I'm, I'm it's no like surprise to me that it's him. Uh because I think, you know, I've I have i have always liked the player. Uh, I thought this his he made the dumbest decision in history going from Frankfurt to Real Madrid. That was a step that was too big. Um and he's nowhere near that kind of number nine that Real Madrid needs. But I think at Milan as a sub, that's his level, and I think it's the right decision. I hope he stays for him and for Milan because Milan have a backup striker in Jovic that is good enough for Milan. They need a starting striker with with all due respect to Giroud, who I know you know he's, he's he had a good game against Udinese, but he's it's looking you know they, Milan need to look to the future. He's thirty seven after all, right? 
Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think that um, there was there was lots of positives, but also negatives for Milan in this game. I mean, Teo Hernandez is, <laughs> well, offensively, he's on fire. We'll talk about the defending in a bit. But on fire, he's offensively. He got another assist for the Loftus-Cheek goal. Uh, he, he, he set up a... a, a um, uh, a, a, a lot of other chances in this game. He had the, cr- I think he had the cross for the Giroud shot before Jovic, Jovic actually scored the equaliser. If I'm not mistaken, but in five games in 2024, he's got uh, one goal and four assists. I mean, he's he's doing brilliantly, um, Teo. And also remember, he did go for that long, you know, playing as a centre back as well, and did did really well in that in in, in that position. Um, Loftus Cheek has had also had a good start to 2024. Second goal um, this month. And he had the header that led to the Okafor, the Okafor winner. Obviously, 2024 full stop has been really, really good for Milan. If you take away the Coppa Italia, um, they're certainly back on track in Serie A. I mean, seven wins in in the last nine games since that Newcastle game. The top four is absolutely secure now, and they do have a glimmer of a hope, I guess, of getting back into the title race. I mean, as as for as long as Inter and Juventus continue on this pace, they're not going to. But all it takes is a, you know, a couple of slip ups, a draw in that game between Inter and Juventus, and, and yeah, Milan could potentially. Get Look, I think I've I've said throughout this season, I think it's a three horse race. Um, I don't think Milan are favourites to win it. They're they're not, but I think it's a three horse race, and I and I was always very reluctant to count Milan out of the title race. Um, I, I think this is going to be between these three. It's a classic. Uh, it's the Serie A of our childhood, isn't it? Milan v Juve v Inter um, mm. for the Scudetto. They, they, are, they do, though, Nima, have too many chinks in their armour still, Milan. That, that makes they you do. suggest that they're going to give away some yeah. stupid games that maybe Juventus <clears throat> and Inter, certainly defensively, I mean, you no. cannot compare. I mean, they say, and I think it's maybe a little bit outdated, but it still holds true that over the course of 38 games, with consistency, yeah. they say defences win championships. I don't they think do. that's strictly as true as it was in the past, but being defensively solid and certainly having games away from home where you have to be solid defensively. Um, Milan are, are they, they, I mean, the defending was all abysmal in this game. I think I in mean, the Serie A, that's true. I think in the Serie A, that's true. And I mean, if we're talking defensively, what I mean, it was Calab- abysmal defensively. I mean, Calabria, Chiar, Teo, some of the stuff they did. Well, look at was- the two goals. I mean, some of it's, for as brilliant as the goal was, I mean, the way yeah. that he done does Kier before he put, takes a shot. I mean, the shot's fantastic. He takes it early. It's brilliant. But the way that he goes past Kier, Kier, Kier gets wrong foot and goes to the floor. I mean, that's 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 terrible from Kier. There was an instance as well with Calabria where he, I mean, the, the all those three instances, the tail before the Tovan goal, uh, Kier when Samajic score, scores, and then that situation in the middle of the park where Calabria, I mean, it's schoolboy errors. Like this is literally- well, the second goal is is pub defending. It's well, pub it's- defending. I mean, to- Tovan totally messes up his skill, yeah. and loses the ball, <laughs> and then Rinders. I don't know what he does. Somehow, sort of half miss kicks it, and it goes mm. through Teo Hernandez's leg yeah, it was to Tovan, and then, he, and then he scores. I mean, so that was that was pub defending. No, it is, it is, and 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 there was an instance with Calabria too, where in the middle of the park, where I just I burst out laughing. It's like, how is this a professional? And the second half, again, I've said it so many times, Milan are just so open on the counter in that second half. I mean, Udinese with better quality. Udinese messed up the final ball so many times at 2-1 mm-hmm. where, they could have, where they could have killed off the game. But they got didn't necessarily create chances, but they could have created chances, but they messed mm-hmm. up the finals because they don't have the quality, Udinese. Um, and, uh, you know, I still don't think Adley protecting the back. Well, they need to get Benacer back, obviously. He's had yeah. a couple of nations. Yeah. Rinders had a shocker in this yeah. game. I, after I gave him the big build-up, <laughs> uh, last week, he, he had an absolute shocker. They, they were better in Milan once he came up. But I think it's more that <clears throat> Milan's central midfield is just not a unit. They're no. not a unit. We can criticise individual players and say this player and that player, but they're just not. They're not a cohesive unit. No. They don't play as a as a as one. That central midfield. No, and it's so no, easy to move through them. Uh, I think that's a very fair assessment. It's it's still a little bit getting to know each other and gelling, kind of thing. Because let's remember two of those three. I mean, Reinders. Loftus Cheek, they're all new players, and they're playing. Milan is playing a new system compared to previous years, so I think there is that aspect of it. But uh, um, for Milan's sake, they have all but secured top four. I mean, they're they're you know the amount of points down to fourth and fifth, you know they they're going to finish third. There's no doubt about that. Minimum third, um, and they can actually now go for 
uh, the Europa League, which I really hope they take seriously. I really hope Milan go far in the Europa League because I think it's important for the growth of this team to be able to build their confidence up and win a trophy uh, in Europe, um, which shows that, okay, it's the Europa League, but it's still a trophy. I, I don't think we should underestimate the importance of winning trophies, even smaller ones, um, because it creates a hunger, it creates a culture of winning. And I think, you know, it's a trophy Milan have never won. So I, I hope they go far because I think they can a little bit. They don't. I'm not saying they should ignore the Serie A. Of course not. But now with the amount of points they've got and where they are in the league, they can actually focus uh, and put some time and effort and care into the, the Europa League, uh, yeah. which I hope they take seriously. I, really I hope do. so. I hope so too. As for Udinese, I mean... A yet another late collapse. I said before, if games were 80 to 85 minutes long, Udinese would, would probably be fighting for the Scudetto this season. <laughs> Same <laughs> with Salernitana as well, isn't it? I mean, those yeah. two teams, the, the amount of late goals they concede is crazy. I know, I know. And then, and then they're obviously now in a relegation race, but they concede mm. so many late goals this season mm. that turn wins into draws or draws into defeats or, or wins into defeats, as the case here. They concede yeah. two goals. Um, I do think they're positive to take in this game um, because... You know, they, I thought the second half they were the better team until that late collapse. Um, Summer such is pure class. I mean, that yeah, a brilliant is. goal. He made it look so easy. Uh, he just has such an amazing effort. And this is why all the big Italian clubs want him. And that's why whoever gets him is going to be very lucky if they use him right. Uh, he mm. is a unique player um, in that. Really he, is. You have to fit him into the right system, I think. Otherwise, he can become a bit of a luxury. But you can see his talent that he has. Yeah, uh, and and I guess Tovan as well is who was a fantastic player earlier on in his career. Never really fulfilled his his potential, but he scored back to back now. Um, and after looking like a an ex player, let's say last season. So I, mean, I think there are some positives at Udinese, but you know, if they keep collapsing late on like this, that they, they are really in a relegation fight. So they do need to be careful, Udinese. They absolutely do. Okay, let's move on to Juventus then, um, who go top of the table now after a 3-0 win uh, at Lecce. Uh, although, of course, Inter do have the game in hand. Inter are at the Super Cup. Um, we're recording this before the, the Super Cup final. Uh, Inter against Napoli. Inter and Napoli winning their, their semi-finals uh, comfortably. Um, so, uh, in the absence of Inter, Juventus has had the chance to go top. Um, they won, so they go one point above Inter. Although, Inter have that game in hand against Atalanta, which... Have they actually set a date for that, Nima, that... Yeah. When yeah. is it? It's going to be, if you give me one second, I'll pull up the date here, but it's going to be uh, in about a week and a half. Oh, um, soon. Yeah. yeah, it's very soon. Let me just bring it up, give you the exact exact, uh, exact uh, date. Uh, but it's going to be after the run of games against um, Fiorentina, Juve, and Roma. Uh, basically, it's going to be on the 28th of uh, February. Uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, so after the month. yeah, about a month. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you and you and times. I mean, oh my god, <laughs> I'm Iranian. Leave me alone. <laughs> Two weeks. Yeah, I'm Iranian. Leave me alone. Five minutes ago, like for me, 1990 is literally last week. So <laughs> well, it is for a lot of us, to be honest. Like yeah. I can't believe that 1994 is 30 years ago. It's yeah, years ago. no, it's not. It was literally last summer. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, but it, it's on the 28th of February, uh, Inter Atalanta. So it's it's going to be Fiorentina Inter, Inter Juve, Roma Inter, Inter Salernitana, Atletico Madrid, Inter Atletico Madrid, Lecce Inter, and then Inter Atalanta. Mm. Yeah. That's not a great time, is it? In between, so it's in between the two, the, in between the two. Uh, Champions no, it's League between games. it's between Lecce, Inter, and Inter Genoa. So it's a midweek game. Yeah, but it's after the first Champions League game, after the yeah. first Champions yeah, yeah. League game, and before yeah, the Inter second. Got Sal- yeah, but Inter got Salernitana at home before. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So that's not. But it's still, it's still, yeah, it's still a little bit congested. But yeah, fair enough. Of it's always, it's that was congested. always that was always going to be the case, though, wasn't it? Once you play yeah. the Super Cup. But anyway, going to going to Juve. Um, Game of two halves for, for Juventus, I think. But first half was was terrible. Uh, there was nothing. It was abysmal. It was unwatchable. The first half from both teams, nothing created at all. Nothing. The second half, though, Juventus were were much better and they they created lots of chances uh, without playing amazingly well. They created lots of chances, but obviously Vlaovic is the is the is the the the, the big one for for Juve. Um, he, I mean, he scored to break the deadlock. It wasn't the cleanest strike, but 
he found himself in the in the scoring position and and then he and he put it away uh, very accurately uh, into the corner. And then the second goal was a was a poacher's goal, which he he stole. Let's be honest, off Western McKenney. Uh, the goal was going in, and and he was like, "But that's what you want to see." Well, yeah, I like, like that. I, I me do too. like that. Yeah. I love that. I love that because he's that kind of a player. And I tweeted out that you know this is the return of the Fiorentina Vlaovic, and 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 he's a poacher. He's beaming with confidence. He's loving life. He's come back from hell and beyond, and now he's back. You know being the main guy for Juve. And and that's what you want to see. You want to have a player of that quality. You want your number nine, your star signing, your marquee number nine signing to score goals like that. And and he is doing that. Um that the, the volley was stunning. It was absolutely fantastic, the first goal. Um the half volley or whatever you want to call it. It was it was brilliant. Um but his his overall hunger as well. He looks fired up. Yeah, that's the big one for me. Yeah. Game. Mm. And and that is so important. And you are, are going to need him like that if they are going to continue this uh, title charge. Yeah. Uh, Allegri's uh, to- spoken about that, saying that he sometimes uh, Vlaovic can be too hungry. He can be too yeah. you know, on edge. And I think in the first half, he was a little bit too much. That yeah, he, he, was. Was, he was on edge. He was complaining at the referees. He was, you know, uh, having a go at some of his teammates. You know, he, he, sometimes you can want it too much. I think he got the balance right in the second half. And, Agreed. And he, but he does have that hunger, that's for sure. Mm. Like we said before, you know, last season uh, and the first part of this season, like it was almost like he had a defeatist attitude. Like, yeah. he, like he'd he almost given up on his Juventus yeah. career. But now he's, you know, he's now got 11 league goals, uh, which, you know, I still think he should be aiming for more than that. Um, but he he's overtaken his league goal tally from all of last season and he's on great Look, I form. I think he's on poor he's on form to score just under 20 Serie A goals which is respectable. Which yeah, is exactly, exactly, respectable. exactly. And, and, and but he's 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 on great form. That's the key thing. You know, he mm. scored two against Roma. Uh, I think two, two Juve, against um, I think Juve are in great form. All of Juve are in great form. They, they yeah. the, the thing I like about this Juve is how comfortable they look. How relaxed they look! They, they, an, an inevitable kind of thing, you know. This kind of, you know, the first half was bad, but that's okay because the game is ninety minutes, and over ninety minutes, we're better than Lecce, and we're going to make them pay. And everyone knows their roles. I think both Inter and Juve, Inter are further, you know, down, are, are much more ready in their project uh, in this regard. But Juve are starting to look where everybody in this regard that Juve and Inter at Juve and Inter, everybody knows their roles. There's clarity. Mm. Everybody knows what their role is in the team, on the pitch, on the sidelines. There's harmony. There's a harmony mm. around Juve that I've not seen for a few years, just like it is around Inter. No, I agree with that. I agree with season. all of that. I, I, I think the, the other thing is that um, Juventus keep an Allegri to that extent and the players are answering questions, keep answering the questions um, that that we think, well, this is, this is, is what's going to stop them from being sustainable. So I'll give you a few examples. First of all, keep winning by one goal. Uh, not scoring enough goals is unsustainable. The, the attackers not scoring goals and just relying on defenders and, and midfielders scoring the goals, as was the case up until kind of like the last month or so, was unsustainable. Well, they're answering these questions because first of all, now the attackers are starting to score. As I said last last week, you know, Vlaovic, Milik scored a hat-trick in the Copa. Um, uh, Chiesa scored last week although he got injured we'll come on to him uh, and also you know the lack of goals lack, you know having too many one goal wins you can't keep winning by one goal all the time that's unsustainable well now they start, I mean have a look at how many goals Juventus have scored in 2024 okay two of those were Coppa Italia games against weakened teams but in five games in, in all competitions uh, in 2024 Juventus have scored 18 goals and they've scored they've got two 3-0 wins in a row in in Serie A, so they're answering the the, the questions that the the the, the 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 obstacles that we should say to them being sustainable. Well, they're answering those questions now. It's about can they keep it up? Can they be consistent? Um, so you know, you they're answering the questions. Every question that's been put to them so far, they've answered it. So you you have to say that that you have to say well done. Uh, so there's still a long way to go, but but I mean you can't argue with that, and ov- and obviously the record since the Sassuolo defeat is magnificent. Played 18, won 15, drawn three since that Sassuolo that f- the famous four one defeat, and they've conceded six goals in 18. You know, so you continue that form, 
that's Scudetto winning form mm. uh, or Scudetto challenging form because Inter are, are doing just as well. So it's um, yeah, you can't argue with it. Um, as for the other good performances, um, I do want to give a word, give a shout out to Cambiasso. The more He's that I watch him so and the more that I study so him, this guy is a monster tactically. He's a tactical monster. His, his, the way that he can adapt and interpret different roles, different positions, but different functions on the pitch, in the same game, even in the same move, is, is magnificent. He can move from the left, so that he can play on the left, he can play on the right, he can even now play in the centre, he, he, which is a role that he played as a youngster in his career. But he can do it within the same move, in the same, you know, he, he and but he's also got quality as well. Um, the only moment of quality in that in that dreadful first half was an incredible cross, it was a world class cross that he put across the box when Vlaovic came charging in at the far post, just didn't get to it. Um, and then of course he got the assist for the first goal, and he's yeah, he's he's. I, I, I think he's 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 a, he's a real interesting one to watch uh, going forward, can be so. No, I agree, and and he's a, uh, he's he's he really is. The more I see him, the more these Zambrotta comparisons become, like they they just resonate in my head because of how tactically similar he is to him. Mm. Um, and he's both footed as well. Yeah, he's got two nah, great fit. He doesn't have the player. the dribbling maybe of a Zambrotta, no, and that, maybe that's no. something that might stop him from becoming a real top 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 player because that's he true. doesn't have that dribbling, but. No. But he has. I mean, tactically, he's no. But he, he's got. He, it's, he's he's still very young, and and mm. to have a player with that much, that, such a high football IQ is is truly yeah. It's, it's very he's very impressive. good in tight spaces. Like he can dribble past yeah. playing tight spaces. When I mean dribbling, I mean like running at players. Like Zambrotta, no, no, like, like Zambrotta used to do on the out on the on the either left and right wing. He, yeah, he could dribble two three players and get you know around them. But yeah, yeah, no, no, he doesn't have that yet. Maybe we haven't seen it yet. But yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll um, just, just finally, before we talk about Chiesa, the Bremer penalty incident. Um, there was a little bit of debate on this. Um, I, I don't think it's a penalty. I think that they're level uh, side by side. Alnquist maybe slightly like a step in front of Bremer, uh, but it's really a side by side. There is a push, uh, a slight push from Bremer on the arm. Alnquist goes down, but it's, it's not. Look, it's not enough contact for me. Alnquist was already off balance. He was stumbling a bit when Bremer touched him, uh, Bremer's much stronger physically than, than Alkvist. Um, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's not a penalty for me. I did see some, some debate uh, on that on, on social media. What do you, what, what do you think? I don't think it's a penalty either. Um, and, but the, I'm looking for consistency is what I'm saying. If, if people are going to pretend that when Inter do, when Inter players are in similar situations, the greatest outrage of all time, and it's Marotta league, fine by me, then give penalties every week. But, one standard will do. I don't think it's a penalty. I don't think it's, you know, he's he's using his arm to push Alan Kvist. He has a right to do that. It's a challenging for the ball. Um, I don't think it's a foul at all. But, you know, I think I think he stays on the right side of the line, just like Acerbi did with uh, w- against Ossiman, uh, against Napoli. It's, it's, it, there is contact, but you're allowed to have contact. It's football. Yeah, Morelli says that there was a slight push from Bremer, but but nothing major. So uh, I mean, no, I don't I, think there's I, anything. I agree with but that. my my point is simply that you know one standard will do just fine. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's the no one standard will do just fine. I mean, I don't think this is a penalty because I think these are cheap penalties that shouldn't be given. Um, but I'd like to see. But then again, this game was also refereed by the best referee in the world, in my opinion, Daniele Doveri. He is outstanding. His games never deteriorate. His the the, the level is consistent. If there is a problem, he looks with the, he, ch- he checks with the VAR. Um, I think he's fantastic, Doveri. Mm. And 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 I, I I just hope that they give more big games to him, and I hope that he becomes a. If one of Italy's biggest referees, because I think, you know, or internationally as well, because I, I absolutely love this referee. I think he's, he, the the level, he allows physicality, but it never gets ugly. It never deteriorates with him. Um, and, and that's what I think football should be. I think football is a contact sport. There should be a physical element of it. Um, and, and I think he, he was correct throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Chiesa. Um, Because he misses this game again with another injury, problem with his knee. Swell, it swelled up uh, in the days leading up to the bat match. It's the same knee as the other operation, I believe. Mm -hmm. But this is his eleventh injury 
in mm. just over a year mm. since returning from the ACL. So this doesn't include the ACL. Since he returned from the ACL, he's had 11th, this is his 11th injury just over a year. Uh, the question now is, um, what do Juventus do about Chiesa? Because his contract... We have a question, his contract, have a question on this in the Q&A yeah. pod uh, tomorrow, uh, sent in from one of our patrons, exactly about this, mm. about the Chiesa situation, what Chiesa do do with that. Yeah. I'd okay. like us to... I'd All like right, let's answer that. that. For the, yeah. yeah, let's answer that because we got like one or two questions on that on the Q and A pod mm. for tomorrow. Okay, well let's answer uh, it to that. Let's answer that. I'll put that out to the listeners. What what do what do Juventus do? His contract mm. runs out next year in twenty twenty five, and he's having all these injuries. Um, so yeah, one thing. The only thing I would say is I think Moise Keane, Juventus will be making a mistake if they if they get rid of him uh, on loan until the end of the season. Atletico Madrid are in talks. I think that would be a mistake. It's too risky. Because Chiesa, with all these injuries, um, um, you know, and also Yield is his age. He's only 18. You can't expect yeah. him to be super consistent every week. And he didn't play well yesterday either. Um, so I, I think it would be a mistake if he ends. But I can understand why Keane will want to go because he wants to go in the Euro squad. He wants more regular playing time. But from Juventus' mm. point of view, I would not be, I would not be letting Keane go. I would, I would mm. be keeping him. Um, okay, right. Let's move on to, to Roma versus Verona and Daniele De Rossi debut on the bench and a, and a good start for De Rossi. He, he got the win, which is the most important thing. Um, 2-1, uh, two, one against Verona. Uh, again, a little bit of a game of two halves like Juventus, but the other way around, I thought Juventus, uh, Roma were, were excellent in the, in the first half. Um, not great in the second half. They couldn't keep it up and, and, and they, they weren't hanging on, but, but they, they, they weren't as they weren't comfortable. Um, but there was, there was, um, I thought some good positives. Uh, first of all, uh, De Rossi changed the formation, which was good. He went for, to a four-three-two-one from the three-five-two, um, which I think is good because if you're going to come in and make a change, don't use the same system. I saw some 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 of the main journalists, Roma journalists, were, were actually predicting in the lead up to the game that he was going to just use the same system, uh, uh, and it almost looked like the same team as well. So I thought, well, what's the point? You know, you, <laughs> there's absolutely no point. But so I was good. I was glad that he used a four-three-two-one, uh, also because I'm fed up of the number of teams in Serie A using back threes. It's just three, five, twos. Everyone using three, five, twos. Napoli are the latest now to go to a back three. Um, and I'm fed up of it. I mean, I'm not against using a back three. I'm just against the, 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 the way that Italian teams just use it as a, as a, you know, if we're in a bit of trouble or oh, let's just go to a back three. Um, and I mean, there are exceptions, but I think that the way that many, and I would even say most coaches play the three, five, two in Italy including Mourinho, is generally outdated. Now, not all of them are. I mean, Simeone Inzaghi is the best example of that. Mm. that you know, I'm not saying it's an outdated system. I'm just saying the way that it's used by a lot of coaches in Italy is a little bit outdated. Uh, because and- they, pack the centra- they, they pack the central part of the pitch. I mean, that's what a 3-5-2 does. You're essentially shutting down, pushing your opponents out to the wing because that's where they can cause the least amount of danger. Yeah. So, but you also lack the the, co- the the cohesion and the 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 kind of you know the team playing as a unit and moving as a unit uh, and getting those patterns of play. I think is often a lot more difficult um, uh, as a result. And um, you know that was certainly the case with Mourinho. And what yeah. we saw in this game in the first half is that Roma did look much more fluid. They were passing through the lines, moving the ball quickly. Good short passes, short passing moves, putting some moves together uh, rather than just Lukaku, Dybala and Inshallah, controlling the game instead of counter-attack. And De Rossi said that after the game. He said, I believe that you should control the ball and therefore dominate the game. It's one of the first things we worked on. Um, so I think that that's all positive. Of course, the opposition's not great. Uh, and it was the only the first half. The second half wasn't good from, from, from Roma. Um, but I thought, you know, there were some positives. Lukaku scored. Pellegrini, I thought, was outstanding in the first half. That's as good as I've seen him play. Um, and I'm glad that he played in a deeper centre midfield role. That's where I want to see him play. I think if, if De Rossi can move him further down the pitch and play him as a mezzala, which I think is, is the best position for him, and get the, get the best out of him, um, and, and together with, with, you know, with Dybala and Lukaku, uh, I think the Roma will have a lot of fun. Um, but it's uh, it was it was quite the Roma fest, wasn't it? I mean, you have the second biggest deity in in the Giallo Rossi part of Rome, Daniele De Rossi on the bench. You have 
the new Roman captain Pellegrini scoring a goal. I mean, it, it was a little bit. It was. It was. You know, it was quite the Roma fest, wasn't it? And and it, it was the kind of thing that a club that has gone through quite a bit of turmoil recently needed. They needed a bit of healing. They needed a bit of licking their wounds and not drama and anger and people throwing hissy fits and and the usual madness that has been associated with Roma this season the negativity the toxicity they needed a bit of healing and they and they did that and they got that um and and I think that's maybe what De Rossi brings I think he basically brings a bit of calm to this side uh a bit of you know let's calm down a little mm. bit I, I I just want to just expand on that Pellegrini point you make because I'm starting to think that as well because one of my issues with Pellegrini playing in a in a in a kind of a more attacking midfield role is, well, number one, there isn't that many areas, like there's not many teams that play systems that, that will allow him to play in, his, in that kind of Trek Ortista role, unless you play like a 4-2-3-1 and play him as the 10. Um, you know, he... Well, four, I mean, he was lower on the pitch. He was more of a Mazzala. Yeah, that's what I mean. He played as a centre midfielder. He yeah, played as part yeah. of the three. He was in yeah. the three in the 4-3-2-1. I um, loved him there. And... The and I think that maybe that is a role for him, maybe going forward, if with the right coach that can do. Like, I could see Spalletti maybe developing. I was just about to say that. that developing him in that Spalletti position. Spalletti will be so thrilled to see Pellegrini play there because, yeah. in his 4 3 3, that, you know, he, that's his Zielinski, if you know what I mean. Possibly, like, yeah, possibly, yeah. Because, I mean, there has been a lot of debate and, and doubt whether he can actually play in the deeper role. And naturally, until now, he has been more of a Trek Ortista. But mm. I look at him, and my issue with him is. His lack of pace. He mm. has that. He doesn't have that athleticism to, mm. to stretch the game. To, to you know, and I just feel like you need that to play in that yeah. role to be a real top top player. Yeah. And I yeah. think that we've seen you know in the last two years. I know the, the system maybe hasn't always been great for him under Mourinho, but he has struggled a lot, yeah. and he has looked physically hasn't looked right. So mm. maybe playing in a deeper role and where he can just control the midfield. He could play in a team that can dominates the possession of the ball. Maybe that's the right role for him. I thought he was outstanding yeah. in this first half. Yeah, um, me too. Great finish. He got the hockey assist for the first goal. Yeah, and with a great pass. Um, yeah, I thought. I thought. I thought he was good. I thought he was and good. He really was. But I have to give a shout out to Bove. I love what he's become at Roma. Like this, he continues to impress week in week out now. Um, and it's nice to see uh, youngsters, Roman youngsters, uh, players coming through the youth ranks, doing well. Um, and it's good for it's good for the club. It's good for the how a club views itself, for the self esteem of a club, an identity of the club, uh, mm-hmm. especially a club like Roma uh, that is so tied to its city and its fan mm-hmm. base. So I, I love to see that. Yeah. Um, El Sharawi was great as well, by the way. Yeah. Talking about Italians, um, yeah. he was. He's got two assists. He was. He was. Um, Dybala struggled. He did, he wasn't so good, Dybala. But I thought El Sharawi was really, really lively. Uh, lots of energy and mm. and brought that little bit of pace, which I think you play Lukaku like if it's a four three two one, you play Dybala and Pellegrini behind Lukaku. I mean, you've got you've, there's just no legs there. There's no there's no there's no athleticism. There's no pressing. It's gonna. You're gonna, yeah. I think you need one of the three at least needs to be someone that can, that can run a bit. Um, so maybe El Sharawi does have have a role. Um, the negatives though, a Rui Patricio uh, shocker for that goal. I mean, oh, they need a new goalkeeper. We've said that for a year mm. now. Mm. <laughs> I mean, absolutely awful mistake for the for the for the Runchu goal. Um, no, it was it was it was a much needed calm win, but As we have to talk about Hella, Hellas. Yeah. That penalty miss by oh my word, that is atrocious. Juric, yeah. That I mean Juric he can head the ball, but he can't really kick it. He he's can't not kick a it. Foot, you know, he's not a football yeah. player. He's yeah. not very good. If the game was feet. headball, he would be yeah, fine. Head I mean, he'd be, be a ballon d'Or winner in that case. He, like if you ever have ball. a look, I mean the, the numbers <laughs> I haven't got the moment, but the numbers of of like aerial challenges won yeah. in Serie A, like Juric is just like on a league, in a league completely on his own to everyone. He's else. like he's like a poor man's Bosnian Jan Koller. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he's like he's, just, he's won like double the headers of anybody yeah. else in Serie A. Yeah. Like he's yeah. just like he's just, he's just unbelievable. The air, but yeah, he can't really play football very well. Yeah, yeah. defending was bad as well. Cha 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 cha. 
<laughs> what, what, <laughs> what's his name? The, the... <laughs> I've actually mentioned his name. Now. What are you doing? <laughs> the right back for Verona. You have an seizure. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a go at pronouncing that name. No, no. Oh, uh, you mean? Um, oh, let me see how you pronounce that. Um, I, I think it's. I think it's Cha Cha. I think so. The Cha Cha, like the dance. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, cha-cha, I think cha-cha. so. I've not seen anyone. Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. I'm not. Um, yeah. I think that's how you pronounce it, but we'll, 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 I'll have to do my uh, research on on how you pronounce that. I think it's Chachua. Chachua, yeah, probably. Chachua. Jackson Chachua, yeah, Chachua. See, yeah. once I saw the name written in front of me, I, I had no problem with yeah, saying Chachua, it. Yeah, Chachua, sorry, Chachua. Yeah. Chachua or Chachua, yeah, yeah, something like that. Not yeah. cha cha <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, he was dear. shocking on, 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 on both goals. Slipped on the first, missed kick the second. Verona selling everyone. What what, what know, is their yeah. plan? Like what, I don't no. get it because they sold Terra Chan and they sold Doig, they've sold him Gonj. Like what what is their like what are they what is their aim? Like do they need are they financially struggling? Like, yeah, I think I think they need to they, they have to they're cash strapped. I think that's mm-hmm. what it is. Um and, and it's a shame because it feels like they are playing Russian roulette with uh, with their season. Um, mm-hmm. and it's silly. Because they, you know, they're not getting stronger. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Um, just before we get to the relegation race, Jose Mourinho, according to the Sunday Times, Duncan Castles, who who is basically the Mourinho mouthpiece, has been for yeah, years. I was going to say. Um, he says that Mourinho... Mourinho's unofficial British spokesperson. That's, called, that's yeah. what I call him. Yeah. <laughs> Mourinho wants to continue working in Italy and will meet with Napoli president Aurelio De Laurentiis this week. His agent, Jorge Mendes, has already opened talks with Napoli about him becoming the next permanent coach of Napoli um, next season. Uh, I don't know. No, th- th- listen, this could just be... I don't m- believe this, it. This could just be Mourinho... Getting cars to put this that. out just to, yeah, just to raise his profile. I don't yeah. believe this one second. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. Like, but but those but, two working together. But already De Laurentiis. I mean, anything's possible with him right now. I mean, he's lost the plot this season with his coaches. He's already appointed two coaches who have been finished for a decade. Why not? Why not? Why not appoint a third? No, one? I think you're being ridiculous. Now you can't compare Mourinho to them. Come on, Mourinho's not been finished in, 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 for a decade the same way that Mazzari and and Rudy Garcia have been. Come on, let's not at let's the not top exaggerate. level, at the level that Napoli mm. are striving for. Mm. Absolutely, he has. He no. is. No, I don't. I think that's at, at Napoli's level. Yeah, if you listen, you do not appoint Jose Mourinho if you want to. If you want to challenge, you don't. The titles. Po- you don't appoint Jose Mourinho if you're Aurelio De Laurentiis because you know that there's going to be fighting. And given how the history between these two as well, I mean, I I remember how they went after each other 13 years ago when De Laurentiis said he would never hire a coach like Mourinho and Mourinho said you because you can't afford me <laughs> and 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 all the nonsense and that they, they they they've never had a good relationship um so I I don't believe this for one second I think this was just Mourinho's way of putting it out there to stir up some shit uh you know to to to, to, to just keep the word going. I mean, the man's in Barcelona right now and there was, you know, El Chiringuito were at the airport when he was coming and they asked him about Barcelona and he started smiling. No, <laughs> I don't. Well, that's like, not going to happen either. I don't think. No, I, <laughs> come on. No, as if Barcelona are going to sack an El icon. El Chiringuito, I mean, they're, they're like, they're like, the, I, mean, I don't know what the hell they are. <laughs> no, they, 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 it's not going to work. No, no. It's, I don't see him going, to, I don't see Mourinho going to Napoli. I don't see Mourinho going to Barcelona. We'll see what his next move is. I think he wants to wait i think he wants to carefully see what happens with the big i think he's going to bide his time um and and we'll see what happens where he goes next and, and what he does and, and so on and so forth but no nah, i don't i i think it would be madness if he went to napoli it would be absolute madness um both for him and for de la Rentis. like they they would it, he, the Mourinho knows how to handle big personalities. He knows how to handle a dressing room. I'll, I, I'm sure he'll get the best out of Ossiman, absolutely. But the football he stands for and the personality he is, mm-hmm. those two getting along. From Spalletti to Mourinho in a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on. I mean, that is just mad. That, that's insanity. Yeah. Uh, there's no way. I, I just can't see that happening. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, right, the relegation race. I'll read out the other fixtures. So, 
Frosinone beat Cagliari 3-1. Fully deserved win. Dominated mm. the game. Yeah. Um, totally dominated and, and um, turned it around. Um, also had a goal ridiculously disallowed by VAR. Um, brilliant free kick from Sule. Um, so it ends a terrible run of form for for yeah. for, for Frosinone. It and it saves Di Francesco. Uh, Cagliari were terrible in, the, in in this game. So they're right back in the relegation race. And Frosinone give them spells a, a little bit of a, a breather now. I think they've got a five-point gap now over the, the relegation zone. Um, yeah. So that was important for Frosinone. Empoli win 3-0 against Monza, a hat-trick from C- Simon Zurkowski, and a great start for Davide Nicola. Um, surely he, couldn't, he can't lead another great escape, can he? <laughs> he surely can. This is Davide Nicola. Uh, it's, this is what he does. Um, he... He, this is this is his his function in 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 the calcio uh, environment in the calcio ecosystem. He 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 turns up mid season, creates a great escape, uh, <laughs> and then he rides off into the sunset. <laughs> yeah, he sure does. This, this is what he does. And w- on that note, I mean, Zurkowski Zurkowski scores a hat trick. That's four goals in two Serie A games after spending the entire season so far thus far in the Serie B and can't score to save his life. Yeah. Um, and and Empoli play a three five two, and just to piss you off even more, Baldanzi is not even <laughs> oh, doesn't get a minute. So, <laughs> oh, so it literally is it, uh, at this point. I think Empoli's existence in the Serie A is just to troll you. <laughs> I think that's exactly what that's why they exist. Baldanzi is supposed to be our big, our big like our twenty one <laughs> star, and you can't even get a game for the for the team at second bottom. I mean. And they're playing a three-five-two. And they're as playing well. the formation that suits him as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, it's brilliant. Um, it's absolutely. I'm hoping brilliant. it's just an injury issue that maybe yeah. that, that, that Nicola didn't didn't play him. But anyway, they won three 0 You can't argue with that. Monza, as I said last week, I'm disappointed with them this season. Yeah. Eight goals conceded in two games. They were awful in this game. Um, Seleni Turner one, Genoa two. Um, Retigui a rocket. My favourite moment in this game was someone threw was it a chocolate bar i thought it was a panino was it a panino i think so i think it was like i a couldn't see sandwich. what it was i think it looked like it had a, a wrap in though it had a yeah. wrap there, so well, i thought yeah maybe, maybe. i don't know yeah, probably, i couldn't see I what know. it was but all i know it is was that a snack and and that it ended. started eating it yeah of course you did and i think i would have done that as well it's a brilliant way to handle it but look this has been one of the most insane weeks which the serie ass of the week is this, this genuinely this has been one of the most insane weeks, even by Calcio standards, where the most one bizarre thing after another has just mm. from Monday to Sunday. And of course, it ends with someone throwing a snack at a player and the player eating it. Of course, that, that's the only way this this could have ended. Um, but yeah, it's it was it was completely bizarre. And and but unfortunately, or fortunately, I should say, some idiot threw a piece of concrete as well onto the floor uh, onto the pitch, yeah. and, and it missed everyone. And and it's just like. Which, why was a piece of concrete like obviously that has to be from the stadium the stadium's falling apart and the fans <laughs> are now literally picking yeah. i just i don't even oh no breathe yeah it's um yeah it, it, was, it was it was it was weird but yeah genoa win and genoa 25 points in 21 games as a newcomer you got to give it to gilardino um it, it's 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 good it's, no, it's, it's good. Retigui, Retigui has got one of the hardest shots in, mm. in, in, that I've seen. In, in, well, not just in Serie A, anywhere. He has a rocket. When he strikes that ball, my gosh, he, 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 he blasts. He, Batistuta, the way, mm. he, the way he hits the ball is, um, it, you know, it? the way he smashes it into the roof of the net is, is like Batistuta. He used to, obviously, he whacks he, it, he, doesn't he? he? Yeah, he just blasts them. And he's very accurate with them as well. He's a, he's a, he's a very good finisher. He's a great really finisher, Retigi. Um So, yeah, him and Goodmanson are... are you're never going to have a trouble. Um, in, in, in You're always going to be mid-table at least, I think, when you've got those two uh, in attack. He just needs to stay fit, uh, Retigi. Um And uh, Solentano are in trouble now. They're, they're, they're six no, points. No, I think that's it. They're six that's points it. adrift. And, and I think... And it's it breaks my heart because... I love that fan base. I love that club. Uh, I love the, the 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 what they what they provide in and around the games. The drama that we've seen from them. I just I, I don't want them to go down, but I think it's almost inevitable now. 
I think it's going it's to looking be different Salah, though, isn't it? Yeah, uh, uh, it's it's looking like Salah. And Inzaghi's Salah not able to, to to lift them. In fact, they've they've gone they've got worse with Inzaghi. So I think there's also a question whether you get rid of Inzaghi now as well. Well, to be fair, they they they, they play better and they get put themselves in better positions. It's just if games were eighty minutes, you yeah. know, or eighty eighty five. Well, they were very unlucky against Juventus and against um, uh, who's, who did they slip up against last week? Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, no, it was they. They just keep conceding. Napoli, Napoli late, last week, yeah, yeah, Napoli as well. Yeah, they they keep conceding these late goals. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, just yeah. before we finish off with Badjo Primface and Serias, the week we can do a profile on Alessandro Bongiorno, who has been in the the news a lot in the last week because there's a lot of transfer interest in him. Milan have been trying to. Um, open negotiations to sign him even this month. But that was always going to be very, very difficult. Um, but there is a lot of interest in Buongiorno all over uh, Europe, among the biggest clubs. Um, uh, Napoli like him, but outside of, of, of Serie A, uh, Manchester United, who will sign a centre-back, uh, at least one, probably two centre-backs uh, this, this summer. Bayern Munich, who will also sign a centre-back um, this summer. Arsenal, Chelsea, and Nottingham Forest, um, a lot of Premier League clubs all interested in him. Um, Urbano Cairo has made it clear no chance of him leaving uh, in, in January. Um, but in the summer, I think it is uh, there is a good possibility that, that, that Bongiorno could leave. And Torino value him at 40 million, which I think is a pretty good price for, uh, for the potential that he's got. Um, because he has been undoubtedly one of the best uh, centre backs in in Serie A this season. If you look at uh, all the key metrics, he he's um, he's right up there. Um, he reads the game really really well. Um, he he he's um, first in Serie A this season for interceptions, for average uh, number of interceptions per game, two point five a game. He's joint sixth in Serie A for all players. This isn't just offenders for, for, for tackles. He's joint tenth for, for clearances. He's he's outstanding in the air, which you'd expect. He's six foot four inch, four inches tall. Uh, he averages three aerial challenges, one per game, which makes him the the joint seventh best in Serie A and the, and the, the third best among all defenders. Um, Milan Juric is number one by a mile in this category. Mm. I should just just say as we as we were talking <laughs> about him earlier. Um, so he's a big weapon from set pieces, uh, both in terms of defending for his own team, but also in the opposition area. He scored three goals this season. And I think I said in an earlier podcast, he reminds me a bit of Matarazzi in the air, the way that he kind of leaps and heads the ball. He's got a similar kind of, similar kind of figure to, to Matarazzi. Left-footed as well. Um, like for me, he's more of, I think he's more of someone, I can't remember who it was, who said Acerbi. He reminds me of Acerbi mm. more than Matarazzi. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and he's he's he's, he's very aggressive with the way that he yeah. plays. He's he's not scared to get stuck in. He puts his body on the line. Uh, he makes professional and cynical fouls for the good of the team. Uh, he's made more yeah. fouls than anyone in Serie A this team yeah. this season. Two point six fouls per game. He has four yellow cards, which can be a weakness. But I actually yeah. like to see this as a positive. I like to see this as as somebody that has the right grinta and the right mentality of being a winner and wanting to mm. to, 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 to if you apply it in the right way. You know that's been lost a lot from 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 its from Italian defenders. When we talk about the loss of the defensive art in general, but also among Italian defenders, you know, having that, you know, like Claudio Gentile, like Cannavaro, like Materazzi, like uh, Nesta, you know, they would Maldini even, you know, maybe less so Maldini, but these players, Baresi, these players would make fouls if they have to, if they had to, you know, and um, the football as well, you know, he he has that, uh, so. Uh, what I like the most about him is is his uh, attention to his positioning, his read of the game. I think that is what I think is the most impressive part about him, given his young age for a defender. Um, He's twenty four. Yeah, I mean, for you know, it's it's still fairly young. It is the Serie A. You're 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 young until you're twenty eight, and then you become magically a senator in Italy. It's this amazing <laughs> place. Yeah, the time is relative. Well, he's been very Serie important a. for Torino. In in um, you know, they had the last season. They had the, I believe Torino had the fifth best defensive record in Serie yeah. A last season. Yes, they did. Even though they finished tenth, they had the fifth best yeah. defensive record this season. Um, Torino only conceded 18 goals in 20 games, which I think is really 
really exceptional for 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 a team of Torino's level. I know they've had problems in the attack, which, which yeah. you know we always talk about with Ivan Juric, but defensively, that's the third best record in Serie A. Only Inter and Juventus have conceded yeah. fewer goals, and and those two have had ridiculous defenses this season. I mean, they're off the yeah. charts. Their defense defenses. Um, so. So I mean that that's really present. But John is a big reason for that because remember Pear Schurz, who's who's yeah. a very key player for for Torino, has been out for basically the whole season and will miss the virtually the whole season, I believe, won't he, with with a serious mm, uh, ACL probably. ACL yeah. injury. So he's really marshaled the defence and and Bongiorno can play. I mean Torino play a back three. Um, they play a three five two, and but Bongiorno so Bongiorno is able to play in the centre of the back three or the left of the back three. He played more on the left of the, of the back three uh, when Schurz was available. Now Schurz is out. He's been playing more in the centre of the back which three. Which is where I think he should be playing. I don't want to see him on left or right. I want to see him in the middle of a back three, which is why I don't understand why Milan wants him unless Milan are planning on bringing in a certain, certain Antonio from Lecce uh, who plays with a back three. At that moment, yes, congratulations, Milan, congratulations, buongiorno, because him in the middle of a back three with Tomori and, and Chao or Kalulu or whoever on the sides, on his side, is, is, is a fantastic defence, uh, which Antonio... Well, buongiorno, Lecce, buongiorno has has played twice for the Italy national team. He got his first yeah. call up by Man- Roberto Mancini in March 2023, and he got his debut yeah. in a... 3-2 win over the Netherlands in um, June of 2023 in the UEFA Nations League. But the big one was he 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 played his second only his second game for Italy um, in the the crucial Euro 2024 qualifier against Ukraine in in November. It was a do or die game for, for Italy. Italy needed to avoid defeat to qualify for the Euros, and a loss would have seen them go to the playoffs. And he started that game, played the whole game in a back four and he was outstanding in that game. He got an early yellow card, mm. which would have added to the, to the pressure on him. I thought he was one of the best players on the pitch. I thought he was brilliant. He didn't put a foot wrong. Uh, and Italy got the nil nil just, okay. There was the controversy at the end with the, with the, the Cristante foul on, on Mudrick, which probably should have been a penalty. Um, but, uh, but, but John John was, was great. And that was in a back four. So I'm hoping that, you know, he can be, can be fine in the, in the back four. I think if there is a weakness in him, maybe lacks a bit of pace. Yeah. Um, which is a little bit, yeah. In modern football, if you're can going be a bit go, of a worry, yeah. And if you're going to play in a back four for Milan, who play with such a high line, I mean... If Piotr is still there, that is. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, no, if it's I, Conte, I, they, they, I mean, they're probably going to play back three if it's Conte, but yeah. 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 It's, um, he's, he's a very interesting, very, very interesting player. Uh, but Jordan... And the, and the, he is. And also, just as a kind of a side note in his personal life, in February 2023, he started a three-year university course in marketing at a private university in uh, Naples called Università Telematica Pegaso, who is a university that is founded by, guess who? Salernitana president Danilo Iervolino. So oh. we've got a nice little calcio uh, uh, full circle there. No. Oh. Okay, well, you do a degree in marketing. That brings us on very nicely to to Baggio <laughs> Prem face and Serie exactly. Ass of the week because Bongiorno can can probably take over the marketing division of Serie A because they they certainly need it. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go into to uh, Prem face of the week. Right, start off with Prem face of the week. Do you do you actually have a Prem face? Um, no. Otherwise, we're going to have to combine it with Serie A because they're, they're both one and the same, really, yeah, to, to, go for it, to be go honest for it. with you. Um, so, all right. So, combined, the Prem face and Serie A of the week is CBS, their promotional image of the Super Cup, the Italian Super Cup, <laughs> um, which is just unbelievable. It's, 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 it's one of the biggest, I don't know if I, do I call it a gaff. I mean, it's just... It's whoever's responsible. They had a shock. Whoever's week responsible for yes. making this graphic, signing off on this graphic, the whole the whole process is just pure incompetence. It's embarrassing. I'm sorry. Like I know people at CBS. I've got friends at CBS. Mm, yeah, me I, too. This isn't a knock on any of you guys. This is embarrassing. You should be embarrassed of your whoever's responsible because this this is bad. This is just reflects on so badly on you as well. It's, it's embarrassing. So the Super Cup in 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 Saudi Arabia at the moment. Um, the, the two semi-finals and the final. Um, the Inter beat uh, Lazio. What, what did it finish three 0 in the end? 
What was the final score? 2-0 uh, um, or 3-0? I can't remember. <laughs> you into but, uh, I remember. Yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was blanking. You mean uh, you mean against Lazio, 3-0? 3-0, yeah, yeah. yes. So Inter beat Lazio 3-0 in the first semi-final. Uh, and on the second semi-final, Napoli beat Fiorentina in the first semi-final. 3-0. So Napoli will play uh, Inter in the final. So those are the four teams. Napoli, Fiorentina, Inter. So naturally there's and a... So, there's a, there's so a CBS natural. do a promotional image of the Super Cup. Um, they have five, for some reason, five teams in the promotional image. Um, the five teams in the promotional image are Juventus, Roma, Milan, Napoli and Inter. Dusan Vlaovic, Paolo Dybala, Christian Pulisic, Victor Ossiman. Lautaro and Martinez. So out, out of these five teams or out of these five players, um, only one of those players is actually playing in the in the in the Super Cup because obviously Juventus and Vlaovic are not in it. Dybala and Roma are not in it. Um, Milan and Pulisic and Pulisic is the centerpiece of this promotion image. He's the big image in the middle, like the big standout, uh, and they're not in it. And Osimhen is at the Africa Cup of Nations, so he's not in the he's not in the the Super Cup either. So it's just embarrassing. There's no um, Lazio or Fiorentina represented in this in, in this pro- promotional image uh, at all. The image is blurry as well, um, which is another thing. They're also all, the kits are all last season's kits as well, <laughs> except Milan. So when they, wherever they've got their images, they've picked their images from, from last season. Um, then... The two background images are, is the San Siro is one of them, Nimmer, right? Am I correct in saying that? It's the yes, San Siro. I think, I think, I think yeah, I, I think it is the San Siro. It's and, the San and... Siro. And the other image, I'm not sure what it is. It's not the, it's, 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 <laughs> I think it's, it's something in Rome. Um, it's some historic, something historic in Rome. It's not the Colosseum. Um, it's something, but it's, anyway. Whatever it is, the game's been played in Saudi Arabia, and yet they have background. The background images of is of uh, attractions in in uh, in Italy. So I mean, all round, it's just one embarrassment after the other. It's just the most shocking promotion I've ever seen. CBS seen. had a shocker uh, this week as well. They they have this morning show, which is I don't know what to call it. Um, it is so cringeworthy. The just the intellectual level of this, I I thought it was a I thought it was a joke when I saw it. I thought it was like they were doing it as a skit on like it was like one of those you know we're just having a bit of fun, like in terms of you know we're, it was like for comic relief or something. But they actually on air spent fifteen minutes putting together the animal that. starting eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Like I'm not, I'm not making this up. I know. I saw this, and I, I wanted to die. I, I to quote you. I wanted I thought, to die. I didn't. I, th- I didn't. I, th- I still can't believe they actually did this. But it and wasn't it, actually an animal. It wasn't actually players who have animal names, was it? it was, no, it was, just animals. Yeah. Like I've got, I've got, I've got a snake in the centre midfield. I've got a horse and right wing. Like you know, the kind of stuff that children do at the age of five. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like. And and, and if it, it's just it's just and then the same people the same geniuses they they're they're showing the Asian Cup they don't know anything about Asian football and they don't care but they bought the rights so they have to show it and they have to talk about it and they talk about it in the most stupidly ignorant dumbass way just listen to this this back and forth okay J- Iraq uh, Iraq has just won uh has, has just has just won. Has just beaten Japan in in a historic two one win, right? The, it's, the the show is called Morning Footy, and Guerrero, one of the hosts, says, "Is that a rivalry?" And then Charlie Davis responds, "They're the two favorites." And Guerrero asks, "Sure, but I mean culturally, I mean in Asian football, yes." Davis added, and then you know, not understanding what what he was asking. They're the two best teams. They're very good. I get that. But I mean, culturally, is it a rivalry? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Japan and South Korea have like been at war. Uh, like, I mean, it's, they, 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 they're still barely on speaking terms. So yeah, culturally, it is a rivalry. And, and the thing is, like, it's not, you don't need to be a history major. Like, it, just don't. This is the kind of stuff I mean. Do a bit of prep. 
you, this literally takes 30, 35 seconds like to to go and do research before you go on air and sit and talk. And then the way they talked about Iraq, like how they've been... Iraq. Is, I, yeah, and, and how if this was the greatest performance in, or greatest thing for Iraq in history, not understanding that Iraq actually won the bloody tournament <laughs> of the Asian Cup. And, I mean, it's just... <laughs> It well, was like I, it was a car crash. Well, I, uh, Iraq. I, I mean, lost brain cells. My brain cells committed ritual Japanese suicide watching this. These two mm-hmm. clips. They committed harakiri. My brain cells sat down and killed themselves when they watched this. Th- these two well, clips. Americans in Iraq, they don't have a. I mean, the, the pre- I mean, Biden said that, oh. that. Biden said that Putin was losing the war in Iraq the other week. Didn't yeah, it? well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's happening in his head. I mean, you know, whatever. No, but it's it's maybe. genuinely. Emba- but yeah, but this is embarrassing. It's so cringeworthy. The the animal starting eleven, <laughs> like th- this is where we're at, folks. Now, huh? We just we just put anything on air. Just oh my god. I, 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 and then, oh, no, 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 no. They've had a shocker. It's it's the Prem face and the Seri ass double. Congratulations to them <laughs> for Morning Footy on CBS for, for the first time winning both of those. <laughs> like they combined them. It's just unbelievable. <laughs> So stupid, uh, and and it's just you don't you can never it, beat. Listen, you're always whenever there's an international tournament on, like the Euros or the World Cup, especially, you're always you're always going to get gold for Prem face and and now Serias, but certainly Prem face comments because culturally, like you know, they just. But this is the, it, this is what I mean in Carlos, England. In, the English sakes, media, and the, the English research. media, and the American media, when it comes to anything outside of their own countries. I mean, we, I mean, we laugh in England about you know. You know that when it comes to to things outside of England, you know they're, they're not the best culturally. But I mean, America takes things onto another level. I mean, remember remember Miss South Carolina, the the famous. <laughs> yeah, know. but she's it's a beauty pageant and whatever. <laughs> but this is not that. This is they're, 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 they have bought the rights and they're showing, or or they're showing the Asian Cup. They're discussing it. This is their chance to actually. They want to show this to their audience. They want to talk to, to about the game to their audience, and they don't even do the basic minimum level of prep you don't need to give a lecture on the geopolitical impact of japan versus south korea no one's expecting that (laughs) but for heaven's sakes like at least know the basics do 30 seconds of prep or have some some poor researcher do the prep for you so you can show it on air and then boast on social media that you know things like because that's how it works in 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 so-called journalism and broadcast media today and and it's it's just so embarrassing, and it's just why are you wasting your 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 viewers? The ex players usually tend to be the worst at this kind of thing because they they have the the attitude of having been former players, uh, and also probably most of the cases, certainly in England, uh, you know, being well off and being set for life that they don't bother having doing any you know research. They can't be bothered. You know, they just you know they don't want to work hard. So they just turn up and, and then they don't have a clue what they're talking about. And they, uh, you know, so yeah, but here's the thing, though. The, well, this is what I mean. Like, no one's expecting you to be the professor of everything. But if this is something you're going to talk about, if you if this is what you, the, your TV station, your, 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 this is a segment you're going to talk about, at least prep for it. Have respect for your viewers. Don't sit there like a moron and go all South Miss South Carolina on us and talk about is there a, is there like a rivalry culturally between South Korea and Japan? I mean, it's it's just it's so embarrassing, and it's just I just want to oh. I mean, if you're going to be, if you, uh, you know, don't don't talk about things you don't stick to animal starting elevens, and you know, my snake at right back is better than your uh, dolphin at left back. (laughs) (laughs) You know, stick to that. It's childish. You know, at least stick to that. I mean, if that's the intellectual level, then keep it there. But at least do the minimum, bare minimum prep before going on air. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes, and that is true, and and that is that actually happened. That the, the animal starting eleven. I, I, I used to. I want to do a whole. I want to do a whole pod just just talking about ripping that. I mean, it's just I can't. Oh my god. Oh. It's that is true. By Who the way, was the it's eleven? Something... By the way, I want to continue. I, I want to talk, talk about this. <laughs> do, what kind of? Why are you asking me that? I'm I don't this know. Stuff. <laughs> I we used to do things like that when we were seven years old in in school. Like that's that's the intellectual level here. And that's fine if that's what you want to do for a bit of a laugh. It's not my cup of tea. 
but yeah it's it was so so cringeworthy <laughs> and 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 they spent a good time doing that and 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 but but of course the asian cup thing they deleted it of course after a while but but um I, I got to give a shout out to Dan Orlowitz on the uh, on Japanese on Japan Times, who went to town on them <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> it was it was very. If you think I go to town, go on Dan's Twitter feed. He went to town uh, on on what they did. It was hilarious. Um, yeah, it was it was very very fun. Uh, Badger of the week, pretty simple. We've spoken about it. It has to be Mike Magnon, I think, for yeah. for the way that he uh, that he handled uh, everything that happened. I thought he came. And out it has of it. to be for me. It's also distant second. Uh, is is Max Allegri, like his his bit on horses? It made me burst out out, out loud laughing when when he was asked about you know. Um, when he was asked about Inter and and the the title race, <laughs> oh, what the robbers and the the, the, the... no 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 it, that was the week before, and then oh. of course Materazzi responded and Inter responded saying, you know, you, you know, pot calling kettle black if if you're the cops and we're the robbers, but then Allegri responded to that saying, oh come on, it was just a joke, I didn't mean it like that like that, and then he goes, some horses need to wear blinkers or blinders, whereas others don't. The horses you put blinders on are the ones that can get flustered when another horse approaches them. Um, so if you put blinders or blinkers on them, at least th- that horse only looks straight ahead. <laughs> I, just, okay. I love him. I absolutely I love his to, sarcasm. I need to work that one out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's what he's saying is that in a horse race, they put blind, blinkers or blinders on a horse to, to look forward. And, and just concentrate on its own race. And he's basically saying, Inter are the other horse that, that, that are stressed about other horses. They need blinders on so that they can focus on their own thing, which is hilarious because he spent the last month talking about no. Inter. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because it's hilarious and it's Allegri. And he's so, his, his slight sarcasm, his Tuscan wit. And you love just, him for it, I know. I, know. I <laughs> love it. It's so funny. And, and I love how Inter are just not engaging with it. Like Simon Inzaghi's just laughed it up and he's like, nah, he just doesn't care. I'm not, you know, I'm not getting in the, into that. Apart from Acherby. Yeah, Acherby did. But I think they've had a conversation about that because like, don't even, don't even bother with this. Just laugh it off. Cause it's funny. It is funny. He is hilarious. Max is hilarious. This, the thing he's got going and the way that he's doing. And the thing is, he's got this kind of mischievous look about him when mm. he goes off on one of these tangents as he well. He definitely like, knows what he's doing sometimes. Like, of course he does. He knows what he's doing. Not, he not, not this Inter stuff, but I mean some of the other stuff, you know, like when, you know, he, he says stuff like, like, uh, we need to defend better, you know, uh, in a game that they draw nil-nil, you know, <laughs> where and have like 0.1 XG and they draw nil-nil and he says, oh, we need to defend better. And that just triggers everyone. It's like, no, and he knows what he's doing because he, he does it all the time and I just love him for it. I just absolutely love him for it. And it's so, it's so brilliant and it's so, the, the, the slight sarcasm, the slight irony in his tone is just, I, I absolutely love him because he, he knows you how just to just love anyone, going. Nima, that triggers people. You that 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 is Nima. No, Anybody that no, triggers no, someone, no, no, Nima. No, 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 no. I don't like anyone who does it. I, I don't like when someone, you know, I like when they do it with a bit of class and intelligence. And Allegri <laughs> does it with intelligence and class. And so did Mourinho when he was at his best. Um, yeah, he, he did, did with he intelligence. Did. He did, and, and it's it's funny. It's it's really really funny. I mean, Conte, he didn't do it. He was just. Just you know, so that when he triggered, he just got angry and uh, started grump, grunting like a caveman. That was neither classy or intelligent at all. But it's it, with 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 Allegri and we, with Mourinho, with guys like that, and and also Sir Alex Ferguson was brilliant at it as well. Like they they use their their language skills, their wit, and and they use it in the right way, and it's very 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 funny. It's incredibly funny, mm. and and Allegri just this, the the horse thing. I just I died when I saw it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's leave it at that. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll be back on Tuesday, on Tuesday. Tuesday for the Q and A, uh, and and then we will have a uh, we've got, on we've got an interview. Yeah, coming on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, no, we're doing it on Wednesday, and then we're doing our. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. We're, we're recording it on Wednesday. We're recording yeah. it on Wednesday. Yeah, we'll see when we yeah we'll we'll, we'll, we'll put see it when out. we put it out. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Thanks everybody for listening. We will see you on Tuesday. Until then, ciao ciao.